All right, well, this morning we are starting just a one-week one message called Twisdom. Social media has literally transformed the world as we know it over the past 10 years. Who can tell me the site that started all the social media madness? MySpace. MySpace, that's right. Founded in 2003, MySpace allowed people to start connecting. You guys remember Tom? Yeah. Everybody remembers Tom? But then in 2004, Facebook started, and it was originally known as The Facebook, and it would take a few years to overtake MySpace. And actually from 2005 till 2008, MySpace was the most visited social networking site in the world. And in 2006, it had more hits, or more visitors than Google did. Think about that. More people went to MySpace in 2006 than Google. But then in April 2008, Facebook took over. Uh, and people start thinking around then that MySpace was dying. But check this out. In 2009, MySpace generated $800 million in revenue still. So it wasn't quite dead yet, but then things got crazier because in 2006, Twitter started. Um, that's the, uh, that's the uh, original look of Twitter. Now it has over 500 million users. In 2010, came up with Instagram, and uh, Instagram looks a little different there. In 2012, does anyone know who bought Instagram? Facebook, Facebook owns Instagram. Did you guys know that? Facebook starting to recognize that it was going to be a big deal, which obviously it is. Some people are like, I hate Facebook. I love Instagram. Well, then you like Facebook because they're making all the money from Instagram. Um, now, on, in Instagram, I'm curious uh, if anybody knows who has the most followers. Instagram. No, in, in, nope. The number one person with the most followers is Justin Bieber. 20 million. Who follows Justin Bieber? Let's do this. I'll read off the names, and if you follow them, put your hand up. Justin Bieber's number one. All right, Kim Kardashian, number two. <laughs> Beyonce, number three. All right, Ariana Grande, Grand? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, yeah. Day, thank you. Selena Gomez, number four. Some of you, Sydney's got them all. Kendall Jenner, number six. Keep it going. Khloe Kardashian, number seven. Miley Cyrus, number eight. Kylie Jenner, number nine. And last, Neymar. Neymar's a soccer player. So you do, he follows, all right. Very nice. How many of you have never heard of Neymar in your life? Man, that's just weird. Now, in 2011, Snapchat started. And according to Snapchat, uh, check that out. That's the original form. Um, in May 2014, all right, so that's this year, the app's users were sending 700 million photos and videos per day. In one day, 700 million. While Snapchat stories were being viewed 500 million times a day. Think about that. Worldwide, and now in late August 2014, so this year, the company was worth $10 billion from Snapchat. So social media has literally changed the world as we know it. It's changed the world you live in. Now, for most of history, teenagers have told their parents, look, you don't understand what it's like to be a teenager. And parents have been like, yes, yes, we do. And congratulations, you can actually say to your parents that to a degree, they don't understand what it's like because they did not have these things that you have. The world you live in is so different than the world they lived in. Most of you will never know some of the things that your parents had to deal with. Things like rotary phones, yeah. floppy disks. Yeah. Now, the floppy disks, let me just say, you could put like a few word docs on this, that's about it. How about this one, the discmen? You used to have to take CDs and you put them in your pocket. Yeah. You have, wow. How about Napster? You guys know Napster? This was the original file sharing site before iTunes was a thing and you would basically upload files and download them and so forth. How about this one? This is, this is called film. You used to have to use this if you wanted to take pictures. And then after you took your pictures, you would go and get them developed and then you would pick them up a few days later. And they used to have the disposable cameras. You should remember those. And what was great about them is on retreats that I would lead, teenagers would take each other's, like, they would take some, usually guys taking them from girls. And then they'd go into the urinals and they would just take pictures of guys standing at the urinal from behind. And the girls wouldn't know it till like, they would develop it. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, it's just like the same thing on your phone, but you just delete them. Imagine going and paying and getting stuff developed. And then you look and there's just guys standing at the urinal. That would be really <laughs> awkward. How about phone books? If you wanted information, you had to look it up in a phone book. Does anyone still use a phone book ever? Let's Peyton does, wow, oh, Mikey does too. Yes, and how about this one? You used to have to rent videos and then when you were done, you had to rewind them or they would charge you extra money. You would you'd go to Blockbuster and you'd go to rent a movie and they'd be like, you owe $2 in rewinding charges. That was like a real thing. And the last one, passing notes in class. 
Now, does anyone still do that? I'm curious. I respect that. Used to, that's the only way. Now you text each other or whatever, you know, but that was old school. But the older generation might not be able to accurately say what it's like to live as a teenager today, but the word wisdom still applies. Now, wisdom applies to all people in all situations throughout history. We all need wisdom. And last month, we think wisdom is such a big deal, we did a whole series on it. And so, as we were starting to write this message, me and Seth and Travis together, we were talking through it, and we said, let's not use the word wisdom, because we've used it enough. And then I started writing it, and I said, you know what? We have to use it because wisdom is that big of a deal. Proverbs 8.11 tells us this. It says, wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire compares with her. Wisdom is that big of a deal. And so if you have a Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter five. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what is wisdom is what we'll start with. Wisdom is this. It's knowing the truth and doing the best thing with it. So what's true? I wanna know what's true and I wanna do the best thing with it. Now, if you were somebody who reads the Bible, and you were to read the first 17 uh, verses of Ephesians chapter 5, there's a few phrases that I think might catch your attention. I'm just going to put them up here. The first one is it says, follow God's example. Uh, in the late 90s, they had little bracelets. Do you remember, anyone remember those? What did they say? WWJD. What would Jesus do? Follow his example. People wore those, and let me tell you, they were actually cool for about a year. I'm just saying. Anyone still have one by any chance? A couple of you do, okay. Yeah, um, follow God's example. It says that in Ephesians uh, chapter five, verse one. Then in verse 10, uh, it says, find out what pleases the Lord, all right? Okay, well, that's what I think nobody here is thinking, how can I irritate and upset God, right? We want that. Verse 15 then says, be careful then how you live, all right? Well, so what is God saying here? He's giving me some kind of caution. And then it says, understand what the will of the Lord or what the Lord's will is. And so to follow Jesus' example, to find out what pleases God, it seems to have to do with how we live, but how in the world can we live how God wants if we don't even know what he wants, right? We ask that question sometimes, God, what does God even want? What is his will? And will is just a fancy way of saying what God desires. We too often buy into the lie that God's will is this mapped out thing. And we have to try to figure it out like a game. Like God is just like, I'm not telling. And you're like, okay, God, do you want me to go left, left? I'm going to try it. No, it's right. It's right. Okay, I'm going to go right and wait for you to put something in my way to stop. That's not at all what it's all about. That's not at all how God wants things to be. God wants wisdom. He, he wants us to know the truth and do the best thing with it. That is wisdom. And so knowing the truth is so important because the reality is this world is absolutely filled with lies. We have to know God's word in order to be able to discern and figure out the truth from a lie, right from wrong, the good thing from the best thing. See, God's word is a roadmap. It's a roadmap for living. We, 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 we have to understand that God wants what's best for us, so he tells us the best ways to go. Wisdom is knowing the truth and doing the best thing with it. The word of God speaks into every area of our lives without exception. And you might say, well, I know that God wants me to honor my parents. He wants me to be nice to people. He wants me to pray. He wants me to not kill anybody. But God doesn't care what I watch on TV. God doesn't care what kind of video games I play. And he definitely doesn't care what I do online, what I post on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or what I Snapchat. And most of you in this room may have bought into the lie that who you are online is not who you really are inside. And some of you say and do things on social media or even in text messaging that you would never ever do in real life because we believe it's somehow separate. But I would argue that what you watch, what you post, what you like, who you follow, all reveal what's actually in your heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in the same way, what's in our heart will come out. Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6 tells us to live wisely among those who are not believers. It says, make the most, okay, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. And see, this applies to Twitter. Live wisely. Make the most of opportunities. It applies to Facebook, Instagram, Vine, Kick, Snapchat, whatever else you're doing these days. Why? Because God cares about your heart. He wants you to know the truth and how to apply it. So two things this morning. And the first is, how can I know the truth? And it's one simple word. And that word is seek. Seek. John 16, 13. But when he, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. All right? He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. See, here's how this is. Let me leave that up there for a second. When he, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and he guides us into truth, all right? He tells us the way to go. We know the truth when we spend time with God. You see, the Spirit of God is God. He's a huge and complex God. He presents himself as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He comes into our lives and he guides us to truth. 
Last week, Seth, Travis, and I had the opportunity to hang out with Dwayne Allen before the service. We talked up here, we took the elevator, heard some great stories, went down to my office. It was about 20 minutes of time, but in that, I felt like, okay, I know this guy a little bit, right? Now, some of the adult leaders, though, they've known Dwayne for a long time because he comes to our young adult group, right? And they know him. You can't know someone without spending time with them. You see, I'm trying to get to know as many of you as possible. And this is another reason I'd love for some of you to go on these mission trips and retreats. Um, that's, you, the more time you spend with people, the more you know them. Uh, and and that's, just, that's just true in any situation. Uh, Jesus said in John 14, 6, he is the truth. God is truth. He guides us to truth. He tells us what to do. And so what's the catch? We have to seek him. If he's the truth, we can't know truth unless we spend time with him. All right. Uh, this week, um, and some of you may have seen this on Instagram, uh, I got to humble um, Trey in, uh, in Madden over there. I hadn't played in about seven years, but, uh, that's, but I did use a super team. But, but how did that happen? It happened because he, he just came up to me and said, hey, can we get together sometime? He sought me out, and because of that, he got to hear why we're doing some of the things we're doing. And I got to know his story a little bit. He got to know a little bit about me. It happens because we ask, because we seek. And so if you want to know God, if you want to know the truth, we have to spend time with him. We have to seek him. And the second thing is ask, ask. See, wisdom is a journey. And if you think you've arrived, you're not going to get there. You need help. And so ask for it. We've told you before, the book of James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask and it'll be given. Uh, and so we, we go to God and we say, God, I want to know what's true so I can do the best thing with it. So back to Ephesians 5, look at verse 1. It says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. You know, follow his example, do what he does. He is an example worth following. But don't follow him in fear. Don't follow him because, well, if I don't follow him, something horrible is going to happen. Follow him because you know he loves you. See, I have three daughters and there are several things that they do because I do. Anytime they have a Coke or Pepsi, they're going to put grenadine in it, which is like a cherry flavoring, because they know that that makes it better. They've, they've learned that from watching me, right? They know to make fun of my dog for being lazy and stupid because he is. Right? They've watched me and they've done that. Seniors, you'll get to experience that if you come next week. They come up to me and they ask me for prayer when they're struggling or when they're afraid um, because that's an example that I've, that I've set. And, and they know that I'm, I'm crazy about them. They know I want what's best for them. So they feel confident enough to do some things that I do. Now, now they also do things that I wish they wouldn't do that they learned from me, but that's a whole nother message. We won't go there. But God's example is that we should follow him because we know he loves us. We should walk as he does, surrendering who we are. And say, God, I don't want to seek my own wisdom. I want your wisdom because I know you love me and no one wants better things for me than you. And so the bottom line is knowing the truth starts with seeking the truth. So then we ask for it. We look to him as our example, right? Ephesians 5.10 says, find out what's pleasing to the Lord. Find out what pleases him. Seek wisdom, ask for it. You know, there is so much power in what we put out on social media or what we text. About a year and a half ago, the Associated Press was hacked, and this went up on Twitter about the president. Two explosions in the White House, and Barack Obama is injured. Okay, it was hacked. It wasn't really true. The Dow plunged 140 points. Bond yields fell. Within six minutes, it recovered. But the long and short of it is, the temporary loss was $136.5 billion because of information that went out that wasn't even true. And everybody who read that, nobody was like, is that true? Because they saw it online. It was the Associated Press, had no idea. And it took them six minutes to fix it. But I wonder, have you ever used, the, raise your hand if you ever used the hashtag forever alone in any situation? Anybody would admit that? Nobody. So, what? Have you ever used it in any situation? Hashtag forever alone. All right, well, let me expose that one. It's a complete lie. You don't have to look closely to know it's not true. The word of God says this in Deuteronomy 31.8. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail or abandon you. He will neither leave or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Now, chances are you didn't mean that when you were posting it. You weren't making some deep theological statement, um, right? But, but the truth of God's word is that you are hashtag never alone. So, so how about the next time someone breaks up with you or your friends have plans and you have nowhere to be, instead of subtweeting them, you know, you just point out that you're never alone. That's the truth. You know, every time we post this or say it, we spread the lie to others. And we, we even, though it's not, even though it's not true, even though we mean it in jest, it's probably not the best thing. So what is twisdom? Twisdom is applying wisdom in a trending world. Now, raise your hand if you ever use the hashtag YOLO. At any point, some of you are ashamed of that, right? YOLO. All right. Now, it's, the statement is true. You do only live once, but the heart of it is wrong. 
YOLO stands for the phrase, or is a phrase that really stands for this, for behavior that, that God would not say is okay. It's like, live your life for the fullest, do whatever you want, because you only have one life to live, so live with no regrets. Regret nothing. But the Bible says the complete opposite. The Bible says if we love our life, we'll lose it, right? The, the phrase YOLO says a lot more than you think it says. See, Jesus came to die so we would have life, right? He, 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 wanted, he wants us to live life to the fullest. It's the complete opposite of YOLO. Philippians chapter two, verses three and five says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking others of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And so it's easy to be like, you know, yeah, I cheated on this test or whatever, YOLO, it doesn't matter. Or yeah, I did this this weekend, YOLO, it doesn't matter, right? That's what we say, that's kind of become a thing. But the reality is you only die once, right? You don't, probably don't see the hashtag YODO too often, right? right? The Bible tells us that death though is not actually the end. We know that our physical bodies die, our souls live on for eternity. In the end, there's only one thing that makes a difference and that's whether or not you have a relationship with God through Jesus. If you don't have the relationship, it doesn't really matter what you did when you were alive. The Bible says you will spend eternity away from God. But if you've given your heart to Christ, if you've given, if you've given up your sin for him, if you've accepted the forgiveness, then you'll live with him eternally. And the bottom line is knowing the truth starts with seeking the truth. Ephesians 5, 6 says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Do not be partners with them. And then it continues... It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light of the Lord. Live as children of light. Uh, there's a lot of deception out there. So many words that look like something, but reality, they are empty. There are some people that put things on social media that just seem so true, but they're just not. And God's word is saying, look, don't partner with people who deceive with empty words. What's the modern application? How do we apply that in this situation? Well, consider uh, the people that you follow. Consider the things that you like. Consider the things that you retweet. Do we take empty words and do we give them a bigger platform than they need to have? Um, you see, training for obedience is not really an easy thing. Um, verse 15 says, be careful as you live. Be careful as you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Uh, I had the most amazing dog ever. His name was Jacob. Uh, he died in 2006, um, but he wasn't the most obedient dog in the world. It took a lot of treats and a lot of little hot dogs to get him to finally listen to me. And when he did, it was such a wonderful thing, but it took practice. Now, having my children, it doesn't work the same way. I can't just give them a treat to get them to obey. Um, but we try to train them even to this day. How do they talk to people? How do we clean up after ourselves? How do you deal with difficult situations? Uh, we joked before that my middle daughter, Megan, who's actually over there, that for years she was going to think her name was Megan No because we'd always say, Megan, no, like it was always like constantly. And it's just part of training and correction. And that's how God wants us to live. He wants us to know. He wants us to look around and say, you know what, God, I want to know more truth. I want to know what's wise. I want you to correct me because I don't have this thing figured out. You see, there are, God's word is telling us, <clears throat> excuse me, in here, not to partner with people who deceive with empty words and to recognize how much we need wisdom and training. Once we know God's truth, though, what do we do with it? Well, it's simple. We obey. Obey. That is so simple to understand, but it's difficult to do. This is where we lose some of you. Some of you are like, hey, I want to know what's true. Give me the truth. Tell me what's really going on. But then once you have it, once you know what's going on, you're not going to do anything with it. It says here in uh, James, don't just listen to God's word. Do what it says. Otherwise, you're fooling yourselves. If you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself. You walk away and forget what you look like. Practicing wisdom now only requires us to know God's truth, but to have also have discernment with what to do with it. And so with, when we're sharing truth, we got to say, what's the wisest thing to do in this situation? Um, a friend of mine wrote this. He said, out of the overflow of the heart, the thumbs tweet. You know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, your thumbs tweet. We underestimate the power of our posts. A guy named Brent Crow wrote this. He said, you can lose your reputation or destroy trust in less than 140 characters. And some of you have seen that happen before. And so how do I know if I'm practicing twisdom? Well, just ask yourself three questions, okay? Three questions to know, am I being wise? Am I taking the wisdom and applying it to this trending world? And the first one is, does it honor authority? Does it honor authority? Is what I'm about to post does it honor God? Does it honor the authority he's placed in my life? Teachers, coaches, your youth pastor, does tweeting thing that mock your parents, I, 
I will never forget a parent at the school that I worked at coming in and telling me how they basically, let me, let me just sidetrack on this. How many of your parents monitor your social media? Okay, not a lot. Now, this parent didn't, and so they came in, and they finally looked at their, and there was a tweet that says, I blanking hate my parents. And so she came in, and she's like, I don't know what to do about that. I don't, you know, and so forth. Now, some of you are like, I would never tweet that. Some of you are like, oh, I actually better delete that one when I get home. Um, but the truth is, some of us, like, we, we, we tweet things like that about our principles, about our teachers, about, uh, you know, authority. Does it honor authority? Romans 13, 6 says, give respect and honor to those in authority even when they're wrong. Because sometimes we look at it and say, but they're wrong. Um, ha- have any of you seen a situation where somebody tweeted something about someone in authority and ended up getting in trouble for it? Just not if you have. Yes, we've seen that before. Again, I worked at a school, so that stuff happened all the time. And people would see it online and send it in, and that was never good. Does it honor authority? How about this? Does it promote unity? Does it promote unity? Well, this has been an interesting week on Twitter in Zionsville, as some of you know. And so some of you, I'm not going to address that specifically, but some of you have seen some stupid arguments taking place and some other bad choices. But I want to share this verse with you, 2 Timothy 2.23. This is a great verse that you can hold on to. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. Okay? Hold on to this verse because I've used this a lot when people are arguing about things and you're like, this is so dumb. And my friend Kevin said this, and uh, I hesitate to say it because it's being recorded, but he said, arguing on the internet is like peeing in the wind. It feels good at first, but it always ends up a mess. <laughs> Think about that. Arguing on the internet is like peeing in the wind. It feels good at first, but it always ends up a mess. So is what you're saying gonna cause division? Is it gonna create conflict? Ask yourself, am I promoting unity? Hey, subtweeting, like, unless you're just making a joke, obviously, is, is gonna cause division, right? Ephesians 4.3, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And I don't know how some people think by, in 140 characters, taking a strong stand on some kind of an issue, whether it's a spiritual issue, a moral issue, an ethical issue, whatever, how that's not going to cause conflict and division. It's nothing wrong with having those debates or having those conversations. Um, But then we'll transition to this last one. Does it promote unity? Does it add value? All right, there goes a lot of what I put online. Does it, am I posting something on Twitter or texting something that I would never say to someone's face? Um... Okay, guys, you're the worst at this, and I don't mean guys in this room, but guys as a whole, and you can, you can just agree and pretend it's other guys, because I'm sure it is. Guys say things to girls now, and girls know this, that they would never say in person, right? There are times when guys send a text to girls, whether it's asking for something or whether it's whatever, and they would never, you're just like, they would never say that in person, but it's just kind of become, uh, it's just kind of become a thing. And just a side note, guys, if you're ever looking to start a conversation with a girl, and this is, I'm doing this for all the girls here, if you don't have anything more to say than hey, you probably shouldn't text. Um, I'm just saying, yeah, I, yes, because, you know, but that's a whole nother thing. If you're just like, hey, come up with something interesting to say. That has nothing to do with the point. But does it add value? Every post or text has the opportunity to build someone up or tear someone down. Now, putting something on your page, now I'm sure nobody here has ever done this, that's guided towards one person hoping they see it does not add unity and does not add value. Think about that. How often, how awkward is that when we see that? When it's like, well, some people went out tonight without inviting me, hashtag, thanks a lot, hashtag, great friends, you know, or something like that. And you're like, I feel a little uncomfortable right now. Send them a message, like do something like that. But we do that all the time. Um, here at this church, uh, there was somebody that we were looking at for a position here, and Pastor Eric said I can share this. And they had a killer job interview. Like they dominated it to where we so, so excited about it. And then we checked out their social media and they were not pursued any further for the job because of what they posted. And what they posted wasn't wrong, but it did not add value and it did not promote unity. And so I want you to know the things you put online, that they're forever. Some of you think you can delete stuff, but there are really smart people out there who know how to find that stuff that you deleted. Uh, Things are forever. When Snapchat started, you saw the little graphic of that. Uh, You used to be able to, um, you, you you couldn't screenshot uh, people's pictures at all. It would black out originally. And then they originally did it where they would just tell you. It, it, now people use SnapSave. Do you guys know about SnapSave? I'm sure some of you do. Hope none of you have that. Where it just saves people snaps, a third-party app, and you don't even know it. I'm just telling you, like, your Snapchats are not private. Nothing you send online, you can't get rid of it, okay? It, it could be out there. And so you could be looking for a job when you're in your 20s. And they could come back and they can look at some picture of you doing something stupid or something that you said. 
and it could come back and it could hurt you. That's just reality. These things are forever. And so when this happened with this person, we made a decision as a staff and Pastor Eric made this decision that, you know what, we're not going to pursue them because we believe that what is out there on social media is a reflection of who we are. Does it add value? Let everything you say, Ephesians 4.29, let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear. Are your words good? Are they helpful? Do they lift others up? Think before you tweet or text. Ponder before you post. Does what I'm about to say or post honor authority, promote unity, add value? And if it violates one of those things, it shouldn't be posted or sent. And why am I including texting? Because even your closest friends tend to screenshot your text sometimes when you didn't expect it. And then they send it to someone else and then they send it to someone else. I do want to address uh, one other thing here that... I believe that who you follow on social media and again, what you like is a huge reflection of you. And I know from my time working at the school where I would look at people's social media from time to time and I I really haven't done that as much here. I would see people that are fired up about Jesus and and, and they just outward about it. And then you look at who they follow and they follow some pretty graphic, profane things. And I just want you to consider who are you following? Or you go on Instagram, you know, it tells you what everybody's liked. And I remember there was a guy who was a bit of a leader and was very vocal about his faith. And I mean, I wasn't trying to be a creep, but it just, that's what, isn't that the point of social media to creep on people in the privacy of your own home? And so then I kind of looked and it had all these pictures that he liked and they were all like really inappropriate pictures. And I I was, oh, oh, I wish I didn't know that, but now I do. And so consider who you follow, consider what you like. Here's some guidelines from Ephesians 5, 3. It says, but among you, there, might not, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place. Saying those, they have no place in the believer, but rather thanksgiving. And so just consider that. Consider who you're following. Consider what you're liking. Consider the message that you're sending out there. The bottom line is this. Trends are going to change, but truth is constant. Truth is constant all throughout history. So does it honor authority? Does it promote unity? Does it add value? And we live in a day where our words are out there forever, even when we don't speak them. Think about that. Now, we record our messages, and so my words in here, they go out there onto YouTube, and anybody can have them. That makes sense. I mean, it's still mind-blowing to think of. But sometimes there are words that we never spoke, and we just typed, and they are out there forever and ever and ever. You would be amazed at the things that people save, the things that people screenshot, Um, I actually, at the school, this is going to sound a little creepy, but when people would send me like embarrassing pictures or videos of people, I would save them in a file on my computer. Um, and then when they were in my office, I would just, Hey, look, look what I got. How did you get that? Just, just making a point, you know, just making a point that that's how easy things get out there. And I'll tell you a little story here as we wind down. Um, and I've shared this story with some people, but we had a, a girl who was applying for readmission at our school um, who had, when she left the school, part of it was because she had sent an inappropriate picture of herself to somebody else. This is two years later, she's applying for readmission. And in there, the, the president of the school asks her about that incident. And she's like, it's in the past, it's over. He's like, what happened to those pictures? She's like, they're all gone. And he says, well, actually, we confiscated a phone this week uh, from a young man who didn't even know her. He didn't even know her, and he had her picture on his phone. Two years later, hundreds of, I mean, this thing's probably all over the place. And so I'm just saying, again, girls, guys, when you, it doesn't matter how close you are in a relationship, be very, very, very careful about those things because you really can trust nobody. Um, And so ask yourself again, is this, is this wise? Is this, is this a smart thing to do? But no matter how our world changes, our need to wise does not change. And so I want to close by reading Ephesians chapter five, verse one. And take this to heart. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, knowing that he loves us, so we want to follow him. Walk in the way of love, just as he has loved us and gave himself up for us. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for this morning. And God, thank you that you can give us wisdom in a trending world. And this world has changed so much even in the past few years. And we think about since um, MySpace even started, I mean, in 11 years, we have all these ways to communicate and some of them, they're just great and fun and I know I enjoy using them, but God, they also can create some serious problems. And we saw that this week in Zionsville where social media created um, such a buzz that it even got on the news. And, um, but Lord, I just pray that you would help us in this room to be wise and just, just think about what we post, to think about who we're representing. And if we're followers of Jesus, I mean, if, if we've claimed you um, as our own and we've grabbed a hold of you, then we essentially are representing you 
And so God, help us to represent you in all realms, in what we like, and what we post, to be conscious of that, not because you're some Nazi dictator who says, if you don't, I will smite you, but because you're a loving God who has said, follow my example because I know what's best. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys are loved. Have a great morning. Sign up for retreats. If you have any questions, let me know.